partnerships, they don't always last forever. Think of a business partnership like a band. At first, everyone's excited. Big dreams, shared goals, maybe even matching outfits, but sometimes partnerships like bands break up. It could be creative differences, diverging priorities, or maybe someone just really wants to go solo. When a partnership ends, it's not as simple as calling it quits and walking away. There are assets, liabilities, and of course, the ever-present taxman to consider. Ignoring these aspects is like forgetting to pay the drummer. It's going to come back to bite you. Understanding how partnerships dissolve, specifically the tax implications, is crucial. Whether you're a seasoned entrepreneur or just starting out, knowing how to navigate this financial labyrinth can save you a lot of headaches and potentially a lot of money down the line. So buckle up as we unravel the complexities of ending a partnership and explore how to keep the IRS happy during the process. Because let's face it, nobody wants an angry audit knocking on their door. Cashing out partner buyouts and their tax implications. Let's say one band member, tired of sharing the spotlight and the royalties, decides to buy out the others. In partnership lingo, that's a buyout. One partner buys the other's shares, becoming the sole owner of the business. Seems straightforward, right? Well, the tax implications can be a bit more complicated than a simple melody. The selling partners recognize a gain or loss on the sale of their partnership interest. This gain is calculated as the difference between the amount realized from the sale and their adjusted basis in the partnership. The purchased interest is considered a capital asset and any gain or loss is typically taxed as a capital gain or loss. It's like selling a vintage guitar. If you bought it for cheap and now it's a collector's item, you'll likely owe some taxes on the profit. The buying partner, now the captain of this solo act, needs to adjust their basis in the partnership assets to reflect the purchase price. This step is crucial for future depreciation deductions and potential future sales. Remember, tax laws are about as straightforward as a prog rock song. Always consult with a tax professional to ensure you're hitting the right notes when it comes to partner buyouts. Winding down partnership liquidation and tax formalities. Sometimes bands don't just part ways, they call it a day, pack up their instruments and sell off their tour bus. In the business world, that's akin to a partnership liquidation. Liquidation involves completely shutting down the business, selling all assets, paying off liabilities and distributing any remaining proceeds to the partners. It's like selling off the band's van amps and maybe even that ridiculous inflatable stage prop. Tax-wise, liquidation can be a bit of a concert finale, a lot happening at once. Each partner will recognize gain or loss on the distribution of assets, depending on their basis in the partnership and the fair market value of the assets received. The partnership itself doesn't pay taxes on the liquidation proceeds. Instead, the partners report their share of income or loss on their individual tax returns. Think of it like each band member paying taxes on their share of the proceeds from selling their gear. Liquidation might seem final, but it's crucial to file all the necessary tax forms correctly. Otherwise, you might find yourself on an unwelcome reunion tour with the IRS. Section 4, divvying up the spoils, asset distribution and tax consequences. Imagine the band decides to call it quits, but instead of selling everything, they divide their assets among themselves. One gets the van, another the amps and so on. This is similar to an asset distribution in a partnership. Partners can decide to distribute assets directly instead of selling them. This might seem like a simple swap meet, but it has its own set of tax implications. The partners generally recognize gain or loss on the distribution only if the distributed property is different from their partnership interest. For example, if a partner only contributed cash but receives a piece of equipment, they'll likely recognize a gain or loss. The tax basis of the assets received by the partners carries over from the partnership's basis. This carryover basis is important for determining future depreciation and capital gains or losses when the partner eventually sells or disposes of the asset. While it might seem like dividing assets is as easy as drawing straws, remember that tax implications lurk around every corner. Consulting with a tax professional can help ensure a harmonious distribution without any unexpected tax surprises. Section 5. Formalities and Headaches. Navigating the tax maze with the right forms. 
Breaking up a band or a partnership involves more paperwork than just tearing up a contract. The IRS loves its forms and dissolving a partnership is no exception. The most important form is Form 1065 the U.S. return of partnership income. This form reports the partnership's income and losses for the year, even if it's the final year of operation. Each partner also receives a Schedule K-1, which shows their share of the partnership's income, deductions and credits. Think of it like each band member getting a statement of their share of the band's earnings and expenses. If the partnership is being liquidated, a final Form 1065 is required, along with final Schedule K-1S for each partner. It's like the band's final accounting before they officially disband. Navigating this sea of forms can be daunting. Remember, the IRS doesn't accept creative differences as an excuse for incorrect filings. Seek professional help to ensure you're filing the right forms and avoiding any penalties. Section 6, State Lines and Tax Lines, Understanding State Tax Implications. Just when you thought you'd navigated the federal tax maze, Remember that state taxes are waiting to complicate things further. Each state has its own set of rules and regulations regarding partnerships. Some states require partnerships to file separate state income tax returns, while others simply require information to be included on the federal return. It's like dealing with different promoters in different states, each with their own set of demands. State tax liabilities can vary depending on the type of partnership dissolution. For example, some states might impose different tax rates on capital gains than others. Before you start celebrating the end of your partnership, make sure you've considered the state tax implications. It's best to consult with a tax professional familiar with your state's specific requirements. After all, the last thing you want is a surprise tax bill from a state you haven't even visited in years.